Hi there, this is Theodore. Welcome to the TensorFlow Extended Video Series. Long story short, we are going to dive deep and get to know the essential parts of modern end-to-end -end machine learning pipelines, including all the problems they are designed to tackle. The model that we are going to develop is a simple taxi trip big tipping passenger predictor. Most importantly, you will be able to make your own state-of-the-art pipelines by using TensorFlow Extended and industry-leading best practices. By the end of this course, you should be able to feel comfortable around machine learning pipeline terminology and the model training and deployment process. You will also develop a strong understanding of all the hidden dangers and technical depth that machine learning models are coupled with by default. We are going to build a model that predicts if a passenger is going to tip well his taxi driver given trip characteristics, such as the time of day, the taxi company and trip start time. This is the famous Chicago Taxi Trips dataset. This is all going to be done inside the pipeline that's able to run both on your local machine and on the cloud. We are going to use the TensorFlow ecosystem to achieve everything I mentioned. These pipelines are essentially made of reusable components. Each component is meant to solve specific machine learning problems that are related to deploying a model in production. For example, there can be a component that does the actual training of the model or a component that does pre-processing of the raw input data. In this series, every single component is going to be broken down into a small video so that even complete beginners can follow through. The only knowledge requirement for this course is for you to have trained a machine learning model somewhere, even without success, without it converging. And not necessarily in TensorFlow. Python and TensorFlow skills do come in handy though. As you can probably tell from the title, our machine learning pipeline is going to be implemented using the TensorFlow ecosystem, TFX for short. This framework will make the implementation part much easier. This is because TFX provides several pre-built components. We are going to break down each component in future videos. Remember that each one solves a specific problem. More specifically, these components are Example generation, that uh, is raw data parsed to an efficient format, the tf.example format, which is a protocol buffer. Statistics generation, which calculates statistics about the characteristics of the underlying distribution of the raw data. Schema generation, that uses the previous component uh, to generate statistics to infer the most likely data schema. Example validation, to validate that the raw data are here to the provided or generated schema. Transformation, which is essentially pre-processing. Model training, hyperparameter tuning, model performance evaluation to evaluate that the model is performing good enough metrics-wise, infrastructure environment validation to ensure that the model runs normally on a production environment within specified boundaries, like time to start and time to do an inference, pushing to production or other deployment targets like Kubeflow pipelines, bulk inference, and finally, custom components are also supported by TFX and we are going to provide some usage examples about them too later in the series. A custom component can be a simple Slack notification sending service, for example. Now, what is TensorFlow Extended and why does it exist? In order to answer those two questions, let's take a look at a simple machine learning model development process. First, the data scientist team looks at available data, maybe draws some conclusions and starts to come up with the ideas. Then secondly, the research personnel start prototyping with different features, different architectures, pre-processing methods, and whatnot. Lastly, the machine learning engineering team is tasked with deploying the final model version that the research team came up with in production. While this is not always the case, it's pretty close. Note that there might be significant overlap with the roles, especially in smaller teams. The data scientists could also be the research personnel and the research personnel could also be the machine learning engineers. Now, set aside the first data science and exploration part for a moment. Prototypes are usually done in notebooks or simple Python files. There are some barriers to break before deploying to production. For example, there are hard-coded constants and both data and code tests are absent. This is important because if you ignore common data problems such as absent data, null values or your data distribution changing over time, a model's performance is going to become worse over time, ultimately leading to a useless model. Moving on, inference is just performed locally, just to produce evaluation metrics. It's not optimized or checked against scalable production traffic serving usage. Machine learning engineers have to refactor prototyping code into smaller and reusable code chunks, write tests for everything, provision servers and GPUs, and also make sure that all the aforementioned problems are taken care of. Fortunately, TFX helps with both prototyping 
and production deployment. If the research team is experienced enough to prototype directly on the FX, it will be much easier to transition to a production ready pipeline. I wrote the script for these videos at mid summer 2020. I started studying about TFX and machine learning end to end pipelines since late 2019. Examples help, but you have to dig up extra information and experiment to actually understand what each component does. And I think that TensorFlow Extend is the most complete open source ecosystem for this kind of task, the machine learning pipelines task, and everyone can benefit from that. Other solutions like Kubeflow pipelines, Converse.io, and MLflow only provide the backbone APIs and tools for the execution of the pipelines. TFX, on the other hand, also provides ready-made components and the more sophisticated runtime engine through Apache Beam. So in the next video, I'm going to explain how TFX executes components code in more detail. This will be the last prerequisite before we get to write some code. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.